What's up, Athena fam? Welcome back to our guide to precision irrigation. This is video three of our five video series. My name is Jay O'Keel, facility advisor for Athena. Today we will be going over veg irrigation strategy and irrigation phase P1. To more easily understand precision irrigation strategy, you must first understand an irrigation phase graph. This is your typical irrigation phase graph. It illustrates the four irrigation phases while highlighting the correlation between volumetric water content percent and substrate EC. Irrigation phases are broken up into P0, P1, P2, and P3. P0 is additional dryback once lights are on or transpiration before irrigation. P1 signifies the first irrigation events after lights are on until our target BWC percent is reached. P2 represents our maintenance shots during lights on period where we maintain our target BWC percent throughout the day. P3 is our dryback period from the last irrigation event of the day to the P0 phase of the following day. The main point to understand on this graph is the relationship between VWC percent and substrate EC. This is the fundamental principle we use in precision irrigation to crop steer or guide our plants to a desired outcome. Once you understand how to manipulate your substrate EC utilizing strategic irrigation events that affect VWC percent, you can create a dialed in irrigation strategy for any strain to reach its full potential. During P1, it is possible to see an increase or decrease in substrate EC. This depends on the substrate EC prior to the start of irrigation events. During vegetative steering, if substrate EC is equal to your input EC, P1 irrigation events will cause an increase in substrate EC until runoff occurs. During generative steering, substrate EC is typically greater than your input EC. As P1 irrigation events will cause a decrease in substrate EC due to dilution. Our P1 irrigation phase is very important because it sets our target BWC percent that will be maintained throughout the day during our P2 phase. It is very important to select the target BWC percent that aligns with your substrate EC goal and is determined by whether you're steering vegetatively or generatively. Since this video is focused on veg irrigation strategy, which typically only requires P1 irrigation events, we'll go into more detail about P2 and P3 in the next video. During veg, Hitting the correct targets becomes crucial to enable our plants to reach their full potential. All good growers know that a solid foundation set in veg with healthy growth is key to producing big sticky nugs in flower. So when transplanting clones into new media, we must be extremely careful not to overwater the substrate. Excess water can lead to stagnant roots and delayed growth. When using rock wool as your substrate, soak your media in pH adjusted nutrient solution until fully saturated. If using cocoa, saturate your media by pouring nutrient solution over the top of the substrate until 2% of the total substrate volume in runoff is achieved. Reference our runoff volume chart to help calculate the volume of your runoff. Using a media sensor, note the VWC percent at the point of runoff. After transplanting your clone into your media, we want to make sure that we have a 35 to 40% dryback before we irrigate again to encourage roots to stretch into the media and to avoid overwatering. Depending on your substrate size, this could take multiple days to achieve this dryback. To calculate your dryback, take your VWC percent at the point of runoff and multiply by 0.65 to calculate a 35% dryback, or multiply by 0.6 to find a 40% dryback. This dryback is an example of a relative change. We calculate our dryback using a relative change because the decrease in VWC percent will be proportional no matter what the VWC is at field capacity. Once we achieve our 35 to 40% dryback, it is now time to start utilizing P1 irrigation events. When initiating P1, we wanna make sure we have transpiration before irrigation. Our first shot should occur one to two hours after our lights turn on. We'll use as many two to 6% shots that are needed until field capacity is reached and we achieve two to 7% runoff. Use a clone tray with an insert to collect runoff and determine volume. Mark your VWC percent at the exact point when we achieve 2 to 7% runoff. This will be our target VWC percent, which will be important when planning our P2 irrigation phase. Each P1 shot must be spaced 15 to 30 minutes apart to slowly allow the nutrient solution to wick into the substrate and avoid channeling, which can occur if a too large of a shot is applied at one time. After this first P1 irrigation event, we won't irrigate again until we see a 20% dryback in our substrate. A 20% dryback could take one to three days depending on substrate size, but eventually it will begin to occur every day. We will continue to use P1 irrigation events each time we reach a 20% dryback. During the beginning stages of veg, we will focus solely on P1 
and P3 phases because growth is slower and plants transpire less rapidly. After our dryback exceeds 20%, introducing P2 irrigation events becomes necessary to maintain optimal substrate moisture throughout the day. Veg is the most delicate time during our growth cycle. For this reason, it is crucial that we hit all of our dryback targets to avoid stunted growth. Thanks again for watching. In the next video, we will cover P2 and P3 irrigation phases. The P2 irrigation phase is our most important phase for manipulating substrate EC and drybacks to steer plants to the direction that we want them to go. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any questions you have in the comment section. Thank you.